let's welcome in our first guest of this evening coming in from Vermont. It is Team 95, the Grasshoppers. We have uh, James and John joining us here tonight. Do you guys just mind reintroducing yourselves real quick and let us know what you do on the team? Sure thing. Uh, I'm James Cole Henry. I'm head coach on 95. And I'm John Castle. I do most things except programming. So, yeah. <laughs> Perfect, because I don't understand programming anyway, so that, that works out for me. So, Awesome. Well, uh, you guys were on just a few weeks ago. Obviously, lots of progress has been done. We have a robot in front of us, which is incredible, and I know we'll be talking more about that. But give us a little bit of a, a warp speed update to where you are now, and then, of course, we'll go into what you've been working on currently. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many first alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. First updates now, supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US, scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. So we started uh, assembling our uh, climber and then we've also done work on our intake, which is uh, what we've mainly been focusing on um, we were able to test it with older pulleys. Um, you can see here we have uh, nylon. Um, and these were too thin and they weren't uh, as deep as we needed them. So we worked on improving them and we were testing them earlier this night and they seem to be working a lot better than before. So, yep. Had some challenges with snow the last week or two. Um, Missed some shipments, missed uh, parts from our sponsors for a few days, but mm. we got them earlier this week and we're in, back on track. Great. So uh, tell, tell us a little about, you said you're, you're working on your intake. So are you, you, looks like you're using a polycord style intake. Um, yeah. can, you, can you give us a closer look and kind of show us, uh, maybe tell us why you decided to go with that and not a ton of compliant wheels or, or the, all the other stuff we're seeing on teams. <laughs> So we went with polycord because it applies a constant pressure to the uh, to the ball as it's going in through the intake mechanism, and uh, it also allows for some compliance um, in the middle and allows for a constant amount of compression. Um, we also thought it would be unique to our robot, as not many other teams are doing it, and we can also attach um, things like. Uh, flapping mechanisms or, or things to capture balls from uh, about nine inches outside of the uh, uh, area we already are capturing from. Um, it also allows us to have uh, contact with the balls up here, which we might think or we think might be helpful, uh, <laughs> depending on if we get enough backspin to have the balls backspin and then spin into our intake if they're up in the sky. So, yeah. Got it. So you're trying, you're thinking that that might help you like land the balls off the goal a little bit faster. Um, yes, you they can... might do that. Yep. After oh. their first bounce. After their first bounce. Got to follow the rules. But yeah. yeah. The first follow bounce. The rules. Uh, I want to ask yeah, a I mean, question that, that... from a uh, chicken skunk in chat coming in uh, asking what the flywheel compression is. Well, actually, uh, we're going to, that's going to the shooter, maybe. So I'm sorry. I was reading that as intake. My bad. So we'll get to that well, in just a little bit. Sorry, chicken skunk. Uh, we have, uh, if we'd like to answer that question, we can. Yeah. Um, we have variable compression, and we can actually adjust all of the separate individual ribs along our uh, shooter. Uh, so we can adjust from, what is it, nine? Uh, we can go from about a half inch of compression to two and a half inches yeah. of compression-ish. Um, and so we're, we're testing out different compression levels throughout. Um, as the, that'll give the ball more time to accelerate um, and therefore be better at giving a consistent shot. So, so far about one inch of compression seems to be doing a pretty repeatable job. Yeah. But that's, so you guys are doing one inch compression, but you're also using uh, compliant wheels as your shooter wheels, right? Uh, Colson four inch. Or, so oh, they're, 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 they're Colson. Colson. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that's, that, that's a pretty rigid wheel, one inch of compressor. So, yep. 
And did you did you add that flexibility into your design based on you know 2020 shooter or was that just something you were like we need to send it and get parts made we're not sure so we're just going to build in it's the variability exactly that second one um we were missing our game pieces early on so we kind of missed a week or a week and a half of early prototyping that we'd normally get done um we're light on students this year we're like and yeah just getting back into the groove of things we thought let's make something that we can definitely dial in later and just get the parts made even if it's a little clunky yeah, I mean, that's a, I mean, I think that's a great strategy. I mean, whenever you can build a little bit of compliance or a little bit of flexibility into your system, whether that's adding extra hole patterns or being able to, you know, slot things, I think that that really, you know, adds to that because you might not have time to build a whole new side panel. I mean, it looks like just so your robot, so you're you're a uh, you do a lot of sheet metal stuff, right? Yep. With the construction, so that whole side of that entire S curve is one piece, right? Correct. Yes. Um, all, yeah, all the way from the flange down here up to here in this flange and hem up top, single piece. Our sheet metal sponsor is awesome, but we have about a week turnaround time on new parts. So um, that hurts a little bit, even though they do quality work. I mean, it looks really cool. I mean, I think from a system integration perspective, having everything all on a single part, if you can get to that level of confidence, you know, yep. makes everything so much easier. But I, I totally, oh, yeah. sorry, no, that's fine. I totally understand building some flexibility to that system, though. If you, it's so critical to the center. You don't want a, you know, a uh, rogue person with a drill trying to make a, a precision hole on yeah. something like that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we actually had trouble with the connection point between our shooter and base plate in 2020. Our shooter and the rest of the indexer were separate pieces. And whenever we spooled up the shooter, even with rivets and everything, the two bits of sheet metal would just slowly start to fret and eventually start vibrating a lot, no matter how we tried to. We struggled with that a lot, and making it one piece just made that problem go away for this year. I, I want to ask you uh, on your bot. So for somebody like like me, who to me, I, I like I need a little bit more explaining on stuff. What advantage does like an S curve bring for like your ball path versus just doing like a 90 degree turn and, and up and through like we see with a lot of robots? So we can with using this mechanism, we can index uh, or have two balls in the hopper ready to shoot. Um, and it also allows it to be nice and simple. And uh, we have it's, it's also very compact as well because we're rotating among one axis rather than having it spread out between uh, several. Um, so it's the main benefits are being compact and uh, having being two simple. balls in yep. the indexer. So our whole indexer is a Neo with a max planetary and a four inch Colson wheel on a shaft. And that's it. No belts, no pulleys, nothing. Just direct drive onto a Colson wheel. And that it's hard to get more reliable than that. And how about like the angle of your shooter that's coming? It looks like it's, you know, it's coming out from a very far back angle is uh, what did you from testing? Where are you shooting from uh, as well too? Or what's the plan for something like that? So we plan to bump into uh, the edge of the hub and shoot up. Um, this allows us to align very quickly without having to focus on getting perfect alignment and then shooting, which will save us time in the long run and make our cycle time shorter. Uh, we also built in adjustability into the shooter hood so we can adjust it later. Um, we can remove any of the ribs that we want. Um, and then we can also, we also uh, milled holes in uh, the side for adding maybe a second wheel to shoot um, using two Neo 550s in uh, a roller. Yep. Um, to maybe answer your question in a little more detail, um, the ribs are set up to shoot anywhere between zero and 25 degrees from vertical. Uh, question I want to grab uh, from chat coming in, uh, JD Commander uh, asking, uh, do you mind turning your bot to show the width of your intake? And can you maybe talk a little bit more about uh, like some of the iterations you've gone through with your intake? Like, was this your first design or what were some of the concepts leading into it? Grab another piece of cargo. So full width, very nearly. I think the intake's around 25 inches wide, 20, yeah, 24, 25 inches wide on a 26 and a half inch wide chassis. Um, 
Uh, we we also are planning to add more uh, rollers to this assembly um, so that we have a more uh, comprehensive um, uh, amount of traction on the wheels, no matter where they are. Yeah, these are hot off the printer today from one of our sponsors, Hypotherm. Yeah, need to get in the camera. <laughs> um, this is the first. We did a lot of prototyping with very simple cross shafts and um, flat material and traction wheels and a bunch of different types of things um, that we took high speed video of. That's all available on our YouTube channel. Um, we eventually decided on packaging it this way with a four bar linkage because it fit really well with how we wanted to collect from the back of the robot and also shoot from the back of the robot. So this stores um, only, it only uses three or four inches um, inside the frame perimeter to store. Go. Um, and still deploys out for a full width collection. Importantly, it also adds a level of compliance. So if uh, our drivers uh, drive into a wall or anything, we're able to have uh, it pneumatically go back or have new pressure pneumatics that will uh, allow it to go retract compliantly. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can see the uh, the belt <laughs> the belt skipping issue we were dealing with. Yes. Um, actually, John, do you want to enable the robot? Sure. We'll probably have to mute our mic for this. Sure. Uh, um, you, you can leave it on. I'll turn you guys down on our end. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's view a little sideways. Oh, actually, John, you want to talk about the singulator first before we go into oh, yeah. the demo? Sure. So our singulator, we were having uh, issues with it being a little too fast and aggressive for the rest of our collection and shooting system. So we put instead of a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 um, uh, VEX versus planetary gears, and we put t uh, 10 to 1 in each of them and then changed them to uh, mechanism wheels so that we can um, have the ball be uh, pressed down to the bottom of the indexer, which allows the balls not to uh, pop out of the collection and indexer area this way, uh, which we were uh, concerned about with our new intake wheels and uh, different gear ratio. Um, so yeah. We might change the VEX versus planetary gearbox uh, gear ratios later, um, but as of now, they work just fine. Yep. So we so got just so a few minutes left, guys. Yeah, let's let's crank it so up and uh, check out what you guys have to offer. Enable. Yep. I'm good. That's awesome. That was great. More work to do. All right. Is there anything else you guys want to see? Any questions in the chat? I mean, I just want to go ahead. Go ahead I just Greg. want to say, like, this is. I just want to say that. I mean, this looks great. I mean, I, I'm excited to see this thing on the field uh, in you know a few weeks. But it's like for week five with still two and a half or three weeks of tuning left. I think you guys are in awesome shape and you've got a lot of really, uh, really cool things on this robot. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Uh, last thing I kind of want to wrap up with is actually just talking about kind of your, your branding on your bot, right? Your team is known to really have that, that just really nice green color that really stands out uh, nicely in your bot. I'm going to assume that's powder coated, but do you mind just talking about the process a little bit for all of it? Uh, sure. Um, we use spray paint. Uh, wow. We go to Home Depot, we grab, um, so it's like Painter's Touch 2X Rust-Oleum. It covers really nicely in a single coat. So that's what we've been doing since 2017, I think, is just rattle canning everything. Um, it's way more efficient than uh, powder coating everything, and it's also less weight than powder coating. Um, yep. And by saving ounces, you're saving pounds. So, Yep, they add up. Yep. So the towers for a climber, we sprayed it. Um, I don't know, like six o'clock tonight and had them bolted on at eight o'clock. <laughs> nice. Ready to go. Um, and 
we, we just don't have a good powder coater that's nearby us is a big part of it. We can go to the automotive body shop, kick on the, um, the downdraft spray booth and just go to town. I mean, it looks awesome to me. I, I love robots that stand out and kind of have that iconic look to it. I think your team does a fantastic job of something like that. Uh, last thing I want to ask is you, you mentioned your climber. We haven't talked too much about that uh, today. Anything that you want to you want to mention on that before we wrap up? Uh, thank you, Spectrum, for having an open build. You guys saved our butts. <laughs> um, we made, I don't know, six or seven different climber designs, and every one of them had some a fatal flaw that we could identify and we just really weren't happy with how it was coming out and when spectrum shared their um their winch base climber around week three it, it was just a light bulb moment for us and we said we are going to do that they answered all of our questions um we changed a few things to integrate with our robot better and hopefully we'll have that put together by the end of the week but um yeah a little design um convergence between open alliance teams for sure well what a great segue as uh spectrum will be one of our other teams that we're showing off this week so make sure you check them out as well but 95 grasshoppers thanks a lot for uh showing off your amazing progress so far we can't wait to see uh the results of it when you come up to your first event in the new england district so wish you best of luck and uh, we'll see you soon thanks a lot thank yeah, you thank have a good you. night guys thanks thanks to kettering university for their support of this video over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by the date on screen and receive more information about Kettering. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.